And it is then on pole position, Alessandro Pierguidi alongside him, Klaus Backler. The final round of the championship is go, go, go. Lights are green, it's Ferrari that will lead. Porsche, then Lamborghini on the run down towards turn one. So Alessandro Pierguidi gets the drop on everybody. Klaus Backler is second. And an effort being made on the inside line there by Jack Aitken to try to get up the inside of the blue Lamborghini from Emil Frey Racing. He's done it, he's gone through. So Jack Aitken is second. And now we need to see everybody making it through safely. There's one that's run wide and off the road and back on again. It's one of the Audis. I think also Philip Eng's BMW was off the track and back on. But so far, so good. But a really good getaway then by Pierguidi. He used every advantage of being in pole position and then uh, ran down into turn one clearly in the lead. But a great start by Jack Aiken to get that 63 Lamborghini ahead of Klaus Backler. That's a difficult car to overtake under normal circumstances. To do it into the first corner will give Aiken that opportunity to now focus on the back of the 71 Ferrari. You never know what's going to happen at the end of three hours. Indeed so. But right now, Pierre Guidi is trying to build that lead. Jack Aitken in second place, and there on the outside line, number two, that's Mauro Engel, and he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Audi of Charles Weirds. Look, as they come up the hill and stays ahead of him, so the Mercedes fends off Audi. What we haven't yet really factored in is whether rival Mercedes teams might help Akkodi's ASP, because it's the same brand, even though it's a rival team to take on Ferrari. Big dive to the inside by Ollie Wilkinson in the McLaren. That's Valentino Rossi ahead of him and alongside him, but Rossi goes a little bit wide and the door is open, but the McLaren now tries to get up alongside. Rossi will have the inside line, look for the next corner, stays ahead. Yes, came in enough room in turn, turn, and got through turn left cleanly and got ahead, or kept ahead of Ollie Wilkinson in the 38 of McLaren. So Valentino Rossi has survived the first two thirds of the opening lap here in Barcelona, but down into the very tight that 28 look, 38 Lamborghini, sorry, 38 McLaren has to shortcut. Now, did he make up a position or not in the process? If he did, he'd have to give that back. We'd like to see that again because it all happened in the blink of an eye. Well, he didn't gain a place, I don't think, but he gained time, didn't he? Because he was able to go quicker through that section, came out ahead, and we've got a car that's run wide coming off turn 16. You saw it in the background. It is one of the Emil Frey Lamborghinis, number 19, it was, that ran wide. That's Leo Roussel. He's got going again, and we've got a car coming into the pit lane as well, and that's 188, so one of the cars fighting for the Pro-Am lead in the championship. Alexander West, at the end of the opening lap, has just come down the pit road, so drama, there he is, in Pro-Am, right from the start. Alexander West to the pits, and there's nothing obviously wrong with that, for the team not looking as though it was ready for him anyway. No, I don't know whether he did give them enough warning whether he was coming in the pit lane or not, so we've got another car in the pit lane been pulled back. Now, this is fun and games coming from the chicane down towards turn 16, and getting turned around was the number 31 Audi, and oh, that's why 188 is in the pits, because it got caught up in that incident as the Audi of Finlay Hutchison was turned around and the McLaren glanced in. There's probably enough damage to put that... Well, it's going to be as good as out of the race, because it's going to lose a, at least a lap, if not two. The 93 Mercedes, and oh, up the inside, Fessy Keller didn't need to be asked twice, but that was the error coming through turn five, and not just one car, two cars have gone through the McLaren. One now, that, corner, two cars pass. If things were to stay as they are now, that would be the gold cap in the championship to the Iron Danes, because Brendan Areeb has just lost a place, and now he's been given a hard time, and he's tagged into a spin by the Lamborghini, around he goes. 27 was Isaac Lopez, who gave him a bit of a tag in the tail. Let's have another look at this. The Lamborghini went for a gap that was never there. I mean, it's a very difficult place to pass at the best of times, but sticking your nose up the inside with a car that is virtually on the race line on the entry into a corner, all you do is you tap the rear of the car. There's the view from Brendan Reeve. He'll be thinking, what have I done to deserve yeah. this? And that was clearly a penalty, in my view, that'll go to the Lamborghini. Uh, the battle might be shaping up for second place now. The leader, as you say, getting away nearly four seconds to the good, Alessandro Pierguidi. But Jack Aitken, class battle together. Fisichella gains another place there. Look on the inside of Giorgio Rodas, so he's 32nd now, or is he? Well, I don't know if he has or not, because the Porsche was on the inside going into turn five. So off the contact, Fisichella through and goes through. And he, is, can't, he can't make any further progress. And a spin there, that was the boots and Audi, wasn't it? Carrie Mojé has gone around, coming out of turn two. So that throws that car down the order. And there is 52 with a punctured tyre. So coming up towards turn three, this is going to make it interesting in Pro-Am because the championship leaders with a puncture limp round and they've got a lot of lap to limp. Absolutely, he's just come out of turn three in the car. He needs to be aware that the speed he's running out of that tyre starts to fall further apart at the minute he can get back. But uh, if you, that tyre starts to, you can see how much it's oscillating. 
wait and see it down the straight. Oh, oh there it goes. The tower's been deflating over the previous lap, and then the tower just eventually super overheats, and that's all it can do. The tower just gives up and uh, breaks the bead between the tower and the the rim, and that's well, that was a self-induced spin. Uh, that 27 so we'll 10 second Roger time penalty away. to be taken at the next okay. pit stop for speeding in the pit lane and entering the pit lane, passing uh, above the, the green area. Yeah. That number 27 Lamborghini has now got a 10 second penalty to serve at its pit stop for speeding in the pit lane and the pit lane entry violation. Into the pit lane now comes John Cadea. Into the pit lane now also comes Charles Wirtz. So this is another important stop for Danny John Cadea. Valentino Rossi is in as well, and so is the leader. Alessandro Pierguidi comes into the pit lane. Back into the race goes number 911, Porsche then. And so here coming towards us is the Ferrari. Alessio Rivera has taken it over. Right, away goes Gunon and just stays ahead of the Audi though as he comes down the pit lane. That's being the... Uh, Gulf Audi and there look is the Mercedes of Stein Scott Horst and so Gunon will be ahead of him as they come back onto the circuits back into the race Nikolai Sheergaard and there's Jules Gunon desperate to try to clear him gets in the middle of traffic gets past the Porsche can't get past the McLaren but there's a right old scrum of cars here and the one that comes off worst there look was Stein Scott Horst because he was briefly blocked by number uh, 91 Porsche that goes out wide so through that battle pack has come Jules Gounon but he's not yet been able to clear the McLaren and through on the inside line there goes Ricardo Feller, Feller takes a place away from Gounon. This is Nico Muller trying to go to the inside of Giorgio Roda and there's the contact he was almost alongside backed out but then another bit of contact turned the Porsche into the wall and also through on the inside there Christopher Hauser chasing after Stein Scotthorst behind them Muller. yep through the on the inside goes Feller and also there Muller through the traffic but at the other side of the corner through has gone Ricardo Feller he's done it he's got ahead of the McLaren that's that's what I call proper racing here it is on board with Feller yeah the McLaren slightly unstable coming out of turn four and all of a sudden you see the Audi gets the opportunity gets up down the inside forces the issue and good work by both drivers that could have been a bit of a rub. So that's not going to threaten this battle for the moment as Michel Gatting does commit to the inside at turn four, goes through, great move. Yeah, good move. Caught unexpectedly, I think, the Mercedes and she put it down the inside, held her ground and got the advantage coming off turn four, then clear of the Mercedes into turn five and now that car will drive away because it is clearly quicker in an overall lap. There in the background, look, is that second and third placed fight. Antonio Fuoco, though, is still on target, if things stay as they are, to win the Drivers' Championship. And Alessio Piccarello, Piccarello can get through up the inside. And that's as Gunion gone through, he finally may have gone through. He has, I think, yep, so he's done it, he's gone by. The Mercedes comes through, and now, look, also Stein Scott Horse on his toes, and there's a bit of rubbing between him and Maldonado, and the Mercedes moves across. Maldonado tries to stand his ground on the inside. Now Christopher Hauser goes to the outside line in the Audi. Can he get the inside line for the next corner? Yes, he can. Has he got the drive up the hill? Yes, he has. And Hauser goes through. So Maldonado, boom, 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 three places lost in about three corners. And there in strife is a Lamborghini that I think is facing the wrong way, coming out of turn one. Spin turns the car. Now, who is that? Stuart White, the South African, who was a real gun at Hockenheim. That's going again now. So there's the reason why. Had to be another car involved. It's a chance down the inside, but the 30 yard he didn't concede. And there, Scott Horse versus Hauser. Christopher Hauser tries to get up alongside. That's the inside for turn three. He's almost level. He's run out over the kerb. He stands his ground on the inside. They rub again. I am coming through, says Christopher Hauser. And he's done it. He's gone six. It was robust, but it was hard racing. Through he goes in the lead. The margin was half a second between Rivera and Costa. It's down to three tenths. I think it was a timely pit stop, a pit call from Dynamic Motorsport to bring the Porsche in. Side Hitchens by Costa. side, down. Does the lead change? It has changed. Through goes Costa. He's taken over the race lead on the inside line. The car ahead coming out of the pit lane was Raffaele Marchiello. He now has got to stay a lap ahead, if you like. He's got to stay ahead of the Lamborghini. The team is absolutely delighted. And Mirko Bortolotti then is going to get into a car that leads the race. And the pit lane may beckon for Albert Costa this lap because you've seen Mirko Bortolotti is ready. Antonio Fuoco will be getting ready for 71 Ferrari as well. But the gap has widened in the space of a lap. I'm bring this car in now. I don't want to get bogged down behind other lap cars. So wait and see. Costa's in. He is indeed. And Rivera is in as well. So he's lost his lead. But uh, let's see what happens in the pits because if it's a, a slow pit stop, the pace could be reversed back again. Uh, we've got Dean McDonald, by the way, in number... 
159 McLaren straight away doing absolute best in the first sector. Best lap of the race, still that of Alessandro Pierre Guidi. Right, so two crucial pit stops. Costa in for Bortolotti, Rovera in for the man that wants to win the championship, Antonio Fuoco. But he's ahead coming out in the Ferrari. Fuoco has jumped back ahead on the pit stop, so Albert Costa's work is in vain. Matteo Cairoli has taken over the lead of the race, I think I'm right in saying, on the track in the Porsche. But look, on the pit stops, Arn Links are back ahead of Emil Frey Racing. So right now, this is the situation. It is enough at the moment for the Mercedes to take the crown now that it's in that fifth place. So winning the race is essential for Iron Links. And right now, even though the Mercedes is only fifth, that would be enough to take the title. So you understand why Fuoco is pushing, pushing, pushing to try to get back onto terms with Cairoli. And that's the Iron Dames Ferrari in a problem. So the car that was on target to win the Gold Cup, Rahal Frey at the wheel of it, is off the racetrack. And just as one Iron Links Ferrari helps another, the third is off the road. Now, is that trying to rejoin? It is. The car going slowly on the exit of three. It's almost in limp home mode. It's going that slowly. In fairness to Rahal Frey, she did a, a great job of getting off the racetrack. The, the road was, was clear. And there they studied the data and trying to work out what's dipped, what's gone. Safety car lights off. Here's the instruction, safety car lights off then. So the safety car with uh, Jeremy Doval at the wheel of it will head for the pit lane this time. Matteo Cairoli versus Antonio Fuoco, the two Italian drivers about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the race lead. But Fuoco, well, for him, it's more than just the race lead, it's the championship lead. So there's a lot hinging on this restart for him. And he can't overtake until he gets to the line and Matteo Cairoli will decide when he accelerates. So, into the chicane. Doesn't go yet, doesn't go yet. Green flag, green flag. Green flag on the start line. Now out of the chicane, Matteo Cairoli floors the throttle, pulls away by length as he comes onto the pit straight. And Antonio Fuoco is not staying with him. Look as they come across the line. So the gap as we go racing once more with 79 laps in the book, six tenths. Just look at Fred Beach. Frustration setting in, you can see. Just all the way through this long turn 12, the Porsche directly ahead of the Mercedes. It's sort of using all the rules and more. Is this the 87 car go down the inside? Is there going to be contact? Is there contact? Well, yes, there is. The Porsche and the 87 Mercedes. What a surprise that was. You could have written the script for that. Here's the leader. And how many laps is he going to squeeze out of this? It's going to be seven and a half minutes on the clock. He's got about four more laps, hasn't he? And a change there, look, Arjun Maini goes through for the lead of the Gold Cup, gets himself ahead of 57, Lucas Auer. So Arjun Maini goes back into the lead of the Gold Cup in the race, not championship, but the race situation. Five minutes, 58 seconds and counting, and a new class leader. They are still fighting right the way to the flag, aren't they? Nick Yellow Leak still looking for a way past the traffic, Kirchhoff and likewise. And there, we've got the silver lead having changed as well. So that's now Neubauer ahead of Dean McDonald. And having got clear of the McLaren, he's getting away. Thomas Neubauer, the champion anyway this year, tries to break away as they drop down the hill. And Dennis Lind out of the pro class of the McLaren is right on the tail as well. So again, because they're all bunched up like this, there's the chance of more things happening. And Antonio Fuoco has pushed hard, he's still pushing hard, but he's going to come so close and yet so far from winning the championship. Some of this you can point to the car didn't have pace at Spa, some of it you can point to the dramas at Hockenheim. But it is going to be a race win for the Porsche because out of turn 16 comes Matteo Cairoli. The final round of Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS Endurance Cup won by Matteo Cairoli, Alessio Piccariello. Klaus Backler by Dynamic Motorsport and by Porsche. It's a happy team. Antonio Fuoco takes second with Alessio Rivera and Alessandro Pierguidi. Not enough to win a championship because the overall endurance crown is going to be won by Akodis ASP, by Mercedes, by Danny Juncadea, by Jules Gunnar and Raffaele Marciello, who comes across the line now. They finish fifth in the race. That is the championship and there is relief as well as joy, and look at this in gold, absolutely, no total of contact, Mighty punted off the road by Lucas Al. two corners from home, and the class leader dispatched towards the barriers. Well, disappointing, that's all I will say about that manoeuvre. Over the line, it is then Lucas Auer who takes the category win, but I can't believe that's not going to get away uh, without a penalty.
So Klaus Backler, Alessio Piccariello and Matteo Cairoli take the win from uh, Alessandro Pierguidi, Alessio Rivera and Antonio Furuoco. Third, Marco Bortolotti, Jack Aitken and Albert Costa with Dries Van Thor, Ricardo Feller and Charles Witt finishing fourth and the champions. Fifth, Raffaele Marciello, Danny Juncadea and Jules Grunon with Fred Vervich, Nico Muller and Valentino Rossi rounding out the top six. Klaus Backler, Matteo Cairoli, Alessio Piccariello receive winner's trophies and the Dynamic Motorsport drivers celebrate victory in the final Endurance Cup round of the Fanatec GT season here in Spain. Endurance champion team, overall champion team, Acodis ASP, the 2022 Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS. Overall champion, Raffaele Marciello. The Endurance champions, Raffaele Marciello, Danny Joncadea and Jules Gounon celebrate here in Barcelona. Thanks for your company this year. We look forward to seeing you at the Motorsport Games at the end of the month. But from all of us in Barcelona, goodbye.